in this segment we are going to discuss the second time series method for forecasting that is moving average forecasting here we have further two methods simple moving average and weighted moving average simple moving average is used when we have stable demand with no pronounced behavioral patterns this method uses several demand values during the recent past to develop a forecast the average value over a set time period for example the last 3 or 4 weeks or 3 or 4 months is used each new forecast drops the oldest data point and adds a new observation so that is why it is called simple moving average method because we are having a uh, moving average calculation weighted moving average assigns different weights to demand of recent periods we will discuss this uh, in the next segment but in simple moving average we are assigning equal weight to the demand data of each period but in weighted moving average the weights assigned are different so this is the formula for forecasting using simple moving average so we add the actual demand or sales data for certain number of periods and divide by the number of periods so that is the simple formula that we use for for the average now the main question that arises is what should be the value for this n there is a simple rule of thumb that is if the variation in the variable remain reasonably constant over time a larger n is recommended otherwise if the data exhibit change pattern a small value of n is advisable so if the, the data is stable there are uh, no uh, significant variations or the data is a reasonably constant over a period of time larger n is recommended and for random or unpredictable changes in the data smaller n is advisable so this could be illustrated with the help of this example so you can see here that the data demand data that we are having has a lot of random variations so if you use a smaller value of n say 2 then you can see that the forecast very well responds to the changes in demand so the forecast is more responsive here if we increase and say to 5 then you can see that these forecast values do not respond to changes uh, in demand they are closer to each other but they do not respond to changes in actual demand similarly we further increase and to say 8 so you can see that the forecast is even less responsive to the changes in demand but the forecast values are closer to each other so we can conclude that uh, the smaller n has better uh, responsiveness to the changes in demand but there is less smoothing and we if we increase and then uh, the smoothing is greater but uh, responsiveness to the changes in demand is less so if there are random variations in the demand that is generally the case so we we use a smaller n and if the data is stable there are little variations in the in the historical demand or sales data then we use a larger value of n so we will further illustrate with the help of an example so we will use the same data as we used for the naive method so we are having the same demand data for two years so if we use n is equal to 2 so we will be forecasting first for march so that will be simply the average for january and february and we can simply drag to forecast for the rest of the 
months, including January 2020. And we will come to these measures of forecast error uh, later. But one thing that you can notice here is the, is the tracking signal. So again, here we are having the positive values for tracking signal for, for all months. And in some cases, the threshold value of plus three is also violating. So once again, we are under forecasting as a whole. Actual demand is greater than the forecast. So if we produce according to the forecast, we, we will be facing back orders or stock outs. So if we use n is equal to five, the first forecast that we will be making is for the month of June. So we will be averaging the data from January till May. And then we can simply drag to forecast for the rest of the months. In this case, for a few periods, we do have negative value of tracking, tracking signal at ES, but again, for a few months, the upper limit of plus three is violating. But as a whole, we are under forecasting in some periods and we are over forecasting in some periods. Uh, but for a few months, we are uh, violating the upper limit. So we could adjust the forecast for these months. Now, if we make a comparison of uh, these two forecasts, we will reach the same conclusion that we discussed uh, shortly. So if we make a side-by-side -side comparison, you can see for smaller n, that is n is equal to two, the forecast is better responding to the changes in actual demand as compared to larger n, that is n is equal to five. So we can expect larger forecasting error for a larger m. So the MED for n is equal to two is smaller as compared to for, for n is equal to five. Same is true for other measures of forecast error like mean squared error and MAPE. So we have MSE of 54,700 something. That is 89,036 here. MAPE is 20% uh, for n is equal to two and it is 25% for n is equal to five. So we are having more accurate forecast uh, for n is equal to two. So error is smaller for smaller n as compared to larger n. But standard deviation is greater for n is equal to two as compared to n is equal to five. There is greater smoothing in the case of larger n, but we require more accurate forecast. So that is achieved when we have a smaller n. So that is the rule of thumb, that smaller is the n, the better your forecast responds to changes in demand. Next, we will discuss weighted moving average. 